Okay, good. Okay. If you can, if you can give me one minute, I'm gonna get, grab my coffee. <laughs> That's okay. okay. All right, I'll be right back. Let me know when you're back. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so I'll begin. Okay, my name is Mike Pucciarelli, and tonight I'm going to talk a lot about how to use props with, you know, the plexiglass tables where, you know, there's many ways you can, you know, use props to add light. And I first want to introduce who I am. My name, of course, my name is Mike Pucciarelli, and I started photography around 2010. Uh, in 2013, I got an associate degree from McGarry College. And then in 2015, I joined Professional Photographers of America. And then 2017 and later, I joined some of the local affiliate clubs like the Maryland PPA, the Pennsylvania PPA, the Georgia PPA. And in 2021, I received my craftsman degree um, from PPA during a virtual ceremony. And that's when I started joining ASP. And I'm very thankful to be in all these groups. These groups are all good. I love PPA.com. I love all types of photography, especially still life photography. Not aware about ASP though, that's good. Yeah, ASP is great. And if you can join, that'd be great. They have a lot of great benefits. Uh, I learned a lot just from seeing the Zoom. So, so anytime you have a question, just feel free to stop me. So I'm trying to help okay. us as I still a photographer. Okay. So tonight's agenda, we're gonna be with the white, you know, the plexiglass tables, the black and the white. And I'd be talking about how to use a strobe, but before adding a strobe, there's ways you can add light with a silver card, with a white card, and there's many ways you can do that. And I'll talk about illustrations on equipment, equipment that I made and equipment you can buy in stores. And then I'll jump over to camera settings. And so this, the Zoom meet you have for this meeting is gonna be the same for the Adobe demo and also the same for the Photoshop demo and also the screenshot demo. And then later on, by the end of this, section I'll give the YouTube live link where you actually see me use the equipment you can just watch and and I'll okay. record that too. that'll be YouTube live so that'll be you know, up immediately okay awesome so if you have any questions you can always you know stop me or you can always email me or uh, do a question in the chat you can also email me at mpetrelli art 2016 at gmail.com. Okay. So these are the tables that I use. And tonight we're going to talk about the white plexiglass table and the black plex table. They both are different, but they both, both can produce very beautiful photographs depending on how you use the lights, the gels, the props, the white cards, silver cards, depending on the camera. Pardon? Well, I'm going to talk a lot about these two tables tonight. Okay. I'll talk about this table first. Before we get into the table, we have lighting modifiers that could be used with any table. We have mirrors, we have silver and gold cards. It's a way to bounce in light in a dramatic way. And the same thing with silver reflectors. Then we have white reflectors. We have white cards for bouncing light in a soft way. 
And there's black cards for blocking out glares. Black cards are great for, you know, when a strobe bleeds uh, too much light. Mm -hmm. All right, we're gonna talk about plastic fusion scrims. And I'll say this again now, and I'll say this again later. Uh, we're gonna talk about the double fusion scrim effect because that can produce a nice photograph. And then we're gonna talk about colorful gels. And they're great for changing the color of the backgrounds. And I'll use gels. And then there's medium sized white plexiglass sheets, and also black. And tonight, we're just gonna use a white plexiglass, which is a small table. And, he, and this would be the second part of the lab. And that's when I talk about also the big white plex table. Then the Cinefill, where you can create a snoot and a tight budget. And I'll show pictures of that later. Then anytime you wanna you know, control the natural light, blinds play an important key factor in just you know, controlling the, the natural light. And the ways you use blinds, you know, in many ways, even in using with flash. Okay. That's good. The bottom two tools, you know, spring clamps, CUG clamps, you know, all sizes are very valuable. And I'll have pictures of that later in this presentation. And then there's duct tape and clothes pins. And they're all very good to, you know, hold props like gels to a strobe. Okay. Wow. Talk a lot about clothes pins and you know attaching the gels to the the soft box of the strobe. Okay. So you know a lot of this, a lot of this equipment here you could buy at an art store or a hardware store. Some of it you can buy at a drugstore. That's good. Yeah. So this is the white plexiglass table. And in many ways, I bought this at Amazon around 2015. It's now still the same table I use today. And these tables go out of stock really quick. They're always coming up with something new. Now, other sites like VH Photo sell these tables. I got this on Amazon, but sometimes the frames really jack up the price. So you wanna make sure you read what you buy, what you need. Okay. But this table, I, I still use. It's a light frame. It's easy. It's it's a nice table. And you know, if I need another table, maybe I'll get another bigger. This table, I can go to BH, but this is still the same table that I use. What's the price range of that? Is it pretty reasonable or? Well, I got one hundred fifty dollars. Um, and it comes with the frame. It's not the okay. frame because if it were the Manfredo frame, it'd be a lot more expensive. Okay. So the many ways you use this table, you can use it one light, you can use it with flash or continuous. You'd also balance it in with natural ambient light, you know, with the flash, you know, with a LED light. And two things are really important here, that you have angle of the camera and position of the light, because by angling the camera and positioning the light, you get a totally different photograph. Now, the next set of slides coming up, I'm gonna talk about how to use you know, one light. And I'm also gonna be talking about how do you add a prop like a white card or a silver card to add a more light. Okay. And Michael, I want, I'm sorry to interrupt you a minute, but I'm listening and I think it's better for me to listen instead of trying to write profusely. Are you, is this going to be accessible for me to look at, go back and, and look at it later or no? I can make this accessible. Okay, good. Because I feel like I'm, just because it's you and I, I can just listen and get more out of it right now. Right. Okay, thank you. This is one way to use the white plexiglass table. And it's with one light where the lights are over here. Now, if you want to add light to the side, try adding the silver white card first to make it look more natural. And the same thing over here. 
So white cards, silver cards can really help, you know, make the photograph look more natural. Like you didn't use flash. Mm. Okay. You can have a light coming over here, but then you bounce in lights with the silver white card. Or you can have a light over here. You have strobe aiming at a 45 degree angle. And then you have a strobe over here aiming at a 40 degree angle, but when a bounce in light and the shadows, that's a great time to use a wider silver card on the side. Gotcha. And this is the white plexus table. There's another way to use one light where you have a glass subject and the light is shining right through. And this is like a white scrim reflector. This is a nice white background. Now in the lab tonight, I'm gonna to be putting in gels behind this. So you have a nice cool background. And if you, so just one stroke firing at the camera and the glass. This is a short way to use, you know, this is another way to use, you know, white plexiglass work with a short table. Okay. This is a way to use two lights and we have two strobes coming at a 45 degree angle and you have white cards or silver cards to bounce in light. Or you can have a light over here and a light coming up from the top. Or you can have a light over here and a light coming up top. And then with the, when the strip fires a light, you have a wider silver card on the side that bounces in light. Wherever the strip's firing, you have a wider silver card bouncing on the side that bounces in light. You know, there's a lot you can do with one light. And this is now two lights. So, so I recommend starting with one or two lights, start with one light and then adding in silver or you know white cards, depending on what you want to do. This is the white plexiglass with two lights where if this is not a glass subject. That's why we've got a light over here. We can have it on the corner here, one here, but the lights over here, you want to bounce in light probably with the white or silver card to make it look more natural. Yeah. And the slide is aiming toward a camera. Now without this um, soft box, this is, this would be a silhouette. This is not a glass subject. That's why we've got to have a light on the outside. Okay. So you put the, the light doesn't have to be here. It could be this corner, but then you have white cards, silver cards, but the lights over here, then you have white or silver cards. The bounce in light. Got it. That's awesome. Yeah. Again, this is this is how I started McGarry College with three lights where you have an underneath light, and there's ways you could, if you want a nice solid white background, you have a light coming at a 40 degree angle. In the lab tonight, I'm going to put a scrim in front of the side. I might put a double scrim. It's the double scrim effect would be really cool. And you have a background light. And depending on if you were to move the light over here and you aim this bottom light at a 40 degree angle, you have like a nice reflection. Mm. You also want to tone down the power of the light over here so you can get out a nice reflection. And tonight I'll talk about gels, where you could put gels over the strobe to get the colors you like. That is awesome. Yeah. This is one way to add a gel. We have armature clamps. Another way is to have the softbox material. You just lay it on the top. You can do both. You can do the same. You know, with these spring clamps, you can, with these um, armature clamps, you could use, you know, you could use medium sized spring clamps. You could use big spring clamps. And these are just clothespins, material that you can buy at a drugstore. It's covering the strobe. Wow. 
that's that's all right. Good. You can do the same thing with small spring clamps. You can also attach, you know, use duct tape to attach it. That's awesome. Simple things that, that will uh, have a beautiful effect. Yeah, yeah. These are one way to use spring clamps to make the curve of the plexiglass table. You can do this with CRG clamps. And I also use spring clamps to hold up, you know, like a foam wall. Mm -hmm. You can also do this with spring, with um, CRG clamps, but I'd recommend just whatever is easiest to use. Hold you can also have a scrim in this area. Cool. This is one way to use a scrim. And tonight, I want about two big scrims or one big scrim in front of the strip. Hmm. And then sometimes you could just have like a grid for a nice contrasting light. Mm -hmm. It's amazing, uh, yeah. yeah. So, now this is now the black plexi table, plexiglass table, where of course the plexiglass is black, but the scrim, and tonight I'm gonna have the double effect scrim at a slant. And again, like the white plexiglass table, the black plexiglass table, you have angle of the camera, you have position of the light, and I can really help a photograph be what you like. Yeah. Setup is for jewelry and watches. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Now, if you want to, suppose you have a light here, you want a little light shadow to the detail, you could put a silver card, you could put a mirror. Okay. A little light. Oh, that's pretty cool. This is one way with the 45 degree angle. And again, make sure that the light is parallel to this. Okay. And you might, you know, if you have two scrims, you want to not use a double scrim, but you can use one scrim. You can also turn down the flash. Okay. And this is great for like a piece of jewelry, this type of setup. That's awesome. This is a way to use a 90 degree angle. The scrim is at a 90 degrees. And, the and this is a great for like a clear, clear glass subject because the light will shine right through the glass and you bring up the edges. Hmm. And in the lab tonight, um, I'm going to have strobes, I mean, gels attached to the strobe to get a nice, cool colored background. And, you know, for any degree angle, especially for like, and I'll talk about this later, is if you have like a non-opeg subject and you need a light at the corner and you should have silver mm -hmm. cards. I'll talk about that later. Okay. So this is still the 90 degree angle. If you just move the light, what part do you want to bring out the most? Mm. And I decided to cut the light in half by just moving the light lower. So you have a nice cool vignetting. Yeah. So, Just positioning of the light then. Okay. And, you know, if you want to make the light less harsh, yeah, use a double screen, but also maybe move the light back. Got it. Just moving the light and just, and tonight I'm going to demonstrate how to use a double screen in this type of work. That's awesome. This is one way to use, you know, black plexiglass table. This is a nice foam board. Hmm. And this is, uh, yeah, a strobe firing light at the camera. This is a glass subject. Probably bring out the edges. You move the glass closer, you move it away. It depends on what you want to do. Wow. That's beautiful, yeah. How do you like it? 
I do. I like that. And you just attach the gels to the strobe with clothespins. And I like a lot of times, um, I like to use maybe a light color in one strobe or a dark color in another strobe. You can combine colors on the strobes too, but I just like to, um, you know, have a strobe and a, and a gels at one gel at a strobe. And a good combination is red for a dark color and yellow for a light color. You could use some type of orange background when it combines. Okay. Yeah. Another good combination is a dark blue and like a light yellow. We said mixture green. Mm -hmm. To do that. Wow. Another way to use like one flash is to make the light smaller. And I could do this many ways. You know, I have a white silver reflector. You could also, you know, put some clothespins and some, you know, fusion draft paper you could buy at an art store and make the light nice and soft. Hmm. I'll talk about the stand in the bag later. Okay. And in many ways, to position this light, and of course, this is product photography, and you want to bring up the product, so you want to make sure that light is aiming at where you want. And see, I have white cards here to bounce some light in a soft way, because sometimes silver cards are too much. Yeah. Oh, absorption of the white. Okay. This is how to use a black plexiglass table with, you know, Two lights where um, this is like at a 40 or 30 angle. Now, if this were a mug that's not glass, if this were the only light, this would be a nice silhouette. Sometimes yeah. you, get, you have a mug here, but you have a light at a 40 or 30 angle. And some you could have like silver white cards to balance some details of the shadows. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Thanks. This is another way to use a 90 degree angle um, trim. And these are just like stretcher, these are stretcher frames for Plaza Arts. And you can buy this. I don't know, it's true. I bought this at BH um, years ago. Stretcher. What is it called again? Stretcher Art Frames. Okay. Stuff you can do with this for backgrounds. You notice I have a shirt firing over here, but now this is a mug. We have a light. Many ways to position this light. You can put it on parallel, you can do aim from above, but you want to keep the 45 angle when you have that second light. Now, if you want to make the shadows not so harsh, I recommend maybe getting a white card or a silver card, depending on the power of your light. Okay. There's two strobes where you have like a watch, and I'll demonstrate that in the lab tonight, where it's going right over here, 45 degree angle, 45 degree angle. Now, if the light's too much, that's why you make the strobe go this way so the black card will take care of, help control the light. And the same thing with this. If this light is too much, and in tonight, I'm gonna to put a scrim in front of this light. I'm gonna put a scrim in front of this light. Hmm. Well, maybe a little too much, but maybe just tilt the lights to take care of this glare. You can also have you know black cards too to help. Very unique. That's 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 actually a very. It, it makes sense. It does. Yeah. This is how to use natural light. You have two or one strobes here, and you can use the blinds so you can make tone down the harsh light. You can also put a scrim. You could also just block the light with a white or a black card. So, so much you could do with natural light, strap flash. I recommend aiming the light with the blinds at a 40 degree angle. So it has, so your subject has dimension. Got it. And the back two strobes are doing like the line here. 
Mm -hmm. yes, that's good. Okay, I see. Yeah. This could be two strobes. This could be one. So again, you would have the strobes at an angle and a strobe here to bring out this. Hmm. No doubt in, you know, silver cards, the bouncing light, white cards, the bouncing white in a soft way. That's pretty cool. So I want to use CG clamps to hold up the scrim. Okay. Now in tonight's you know lab, I made the scrim big enough; it just has to rest against the pole. But I can use this if I have to. And in tonight's lab, in one of the rooms, it's already set up where I have the scrim already here. I mean the the um, CG clamp already attached. Okay. That's pretty cool. The way you have it set up. Yeah. These are big uh, spring clamps. But now I just have one, you know, medium size uh, spring clamp or CUG clamp on the top here. You know, like you saw in the other picture. Mm -hmm. Also have spring clamps to hold this up. You could do this with CG clamps like you saw in the other photograph. Got it. Wow. Now we have a scrim wall in case you want to fire the light, make it softer. You could just put a white card or you could just leave it as a white scrim. And then you have white walls. So if you want to have a strobe over here. Go mm -hmm. bounce in light in a soft way. It's pretty cool. And we have, you know, silver walls, where if you have a lot, a show would fire over here with bounce in light over here, or if a show would, at a 40 year frame, would fire here, we bounce in light in here. And I'm using spring clamps to hold up the table. Okay, I see it now. This is like a black card where it's used a block light when a strobe bleeds too much light, like in the other picture diagrams. Mm -hmm. Black cards are also, I'll talk about the end too, they can create a cool background, but black cards are great for, you know, blocking unwanted light like a glare on a product. Because it's absorption power, you know, for, for the, it, it absorbs it, it brings it. It absorbs extra light, basically, right? The black. Yeah. So, are there any questions on either tables? No, this is good. I'm I'm focusing on the uh, the pictures because it's when you're talking that is good. Good. Okay, so now I'm going to get over to the next part. Is here. We're gonna talk about the camera settings. This is just my Canon diagram where what it looks like when I'm still alive. Sometimes I have to cut the shutter in half, which is 125th to 250th. I like to start at F16, or I can start other apertures too. I always want to leave the ISO at 100. Okay. I'll talk about how to use other ISO but later, but I like to just leave it at 100. If you put it on auto, it could produce way too much light. Mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about all these settings in the coming slides and a shoot in raw and either in manual mode or bulb mode for lightning. Manual mode for still life, you know, plexi work, product work, and then bulb for light painting. And I'll talk about the drive modes later, single shooting. Good deal. Again, the drive mode, I like to take just one shot at a time. And I can use the timer. I can, you know, use the two second exposure, 10 second. These are all very good to use. You know, port, cell ports, I like to use a 10 or two. Sometimes I can use a two and still like, but a lot of times I just use the single shooting drive mode.
Now the metering mode, I like the value weighted the best. Produces the best contrast. I never really use a center weighted. I focus on a center photograph. And sometimes I can use partial exposure. Partial exposure is when you have a super bright background. Great for outdoor photography. You can use it at still life too, but it's great for help and control the exposure. Okay. And there's, you know, spot metering where these are great for portraits. You lock your exposure and take the shot. But a lot of times I just like to use the evaluator because it gets what I need. But these are all good to use. Even center weight, but I like to, you know, concentrate on the first, you know, the first set, you know, the evaluated mode, partial exposure, and also spot metering. These are all helpful points too. That's good. Thank you. How do you find this helpful? Now the picture style, I like to use a standard because it's the sharpest. These are also good to use too. Now I know some people use monochrome for black and white. I don't because I feel like it, it can mess up the pixels. It just I want the pickles to be in raw form. So that's why I just like to use the standard. But okay. portrait and landscape, they tend to be a little softer. They work well in their special environments. But I could use the other custom setting one, two, three, or set when I do outdoors. But a lot of times, you know, I just have use a standard. Okay. The focus mode is I like to use a zone autofocus because it focuses on part of the photograph and the pixels reset more faster when you use this mode. Sometimes I can use 19 point AF, but, but it's 19, you know, so technology say they have 45 points, they have 50. Technology is exploding, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> easier to use than this, but these are good to use too. And then you get the single point of focus. You got the spot of focus this is macro photography. It's like the single point focus on steroids, but only it's designed for macro photography. But a lot of times, you know, I just use the manual focus. Okay. White balance. I either use the 5200 automatically set. Recently, I've been setting my Kelvin to 5400. I feel like that's better. So. I never use AWS auto white bounces right here because it makes a photograph look natural. And I know some people use AWS for video fine, but I don't. And I just use either the daylight white bounce or the set the Kelvin. Sometimes you can set the custom white bounce where you take a photograph of a white card. Yeah. You set it and it's automatically set. And you just set it. Now, if the light changes, then you got to do a new custom white balance. That's yeah, cool. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Not ideal outside, right? <laughs> but I just like to either have it set it at fifty two hundred, use this setting, the daylight, or just set the Kelvin to fifty four hundred, whatever you want, and just use that same setting. Now, if the light changes, then then make changes, but recommend either the uh, Daylight white balance or set the Kelvin, at, you know, what you like, 5400. Okay. Awesome. The long exposure noise reduction for a properly exposed image, use zero. One's automatic. Two, if you take the picture, it'll take you get longer you back to the original screen because it's going through algorithms. Mm -hmm. It was great for correcting blue color cast, but maybe they had that problem with the older these stars, but technology is dead. You pretty much almost don't need to use that. So I just use zero or one, but hey, if you need to use a setting, it's here. Okay. And the high speed ISO noise reduction. Now, with a probably exposed image, you can either disable it or use zero, but you can use one, but you should never have to use two. Okay. I think it could mess up the pixels, but the probably exposed image, as long as it's probably exposed, don't use this setting, disable it. But mm -hmm. if you want zero, 
Maybe you can use one, but I always think of your environment for pixels when you take a picture. Makes sense. Color space. Um, I always like to start from Adobe RGB, which is 57 billion colors. And then when you convert it to a JPEG, it converts to sRGB at 16.7 million colors. And how are we going to use this JPEG? Are you going to post on the web? Then make sure you check off convert to sRGB. Now, when you paste in Photoshop, you do not want to check off sRGB. Why? Because you can mess up the camera profile. You have an error message, a profile mismatch, and you don't want that. Uh -huh. It just depends on what are you going to do with this JPEG. And I know there's pro photo where I know some people start from RGB pro photo. That's 281 trillion colors, but the human eye can only recognize 2 million colors, but technology is changing. And man, it's just pro photo. Some people are starting to use pro photo, which is 281 trillion colors of work with Photoshop. But the question is, how many colors can a human eye recognize? Only two or three million. Right. Then when you print, then you're only stuck with 16,000 colors. And this, the UCMYK, you know, cyan, yellow, magnetic, K, or black, yeah. you know, white's, black is no color, black and white. For the white, it's 255, 255, T55. For K, black, it's zero, 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 but Anything between those numbers are colors. I have a question about the color space. So I guess it depends on what's your end result for what you're going to use the photo for. For still photography, do you still, you want to, when you're, after you take it, do you, you wait to decide if it's going to be a print or if people are going to use it on the web, then you make that decision at that point? I do as a start from here. Adobe with RAW. I bring in a Photoshop. If I post on the web, then I convert it to here. Got it. Start in RAW, and you only start with Adobe RGB. Okay. And you, if you want to post on the web or make the file a lighter size, then you work with this. Got it. Now, it's auto exposure bracketing, where if you want to shoot the same file with a stop over and a stop under. I always use one stop because the highlighted file will be easier to work with. Because if you do two stops, it's harder to work with. But you want to think of your pixels for you know the one stop over exposure. And that's why I always like to use you know one stop under and one stop over. And these are the strobes I use. We have two strip boxes, and these are L-chrome strobes. And we have the strobes on the side are two times more powerful than here. They're more powerful, but it's different light. But the light here is for a different purpose, a narrow purpose. Got it. These are my non-strobe lights, where I have a few of these. I have the Spider Fives. You can these switches will control the bulbs depending on what you want to do. And these are the um, Phototax 7 sockets where the strip will control this. So we have a strip for a, a column of lights. Okay. These are my stands. These are concrete blocks to hold stuff. And I'll talk about concrete blocks later. You just buy this at a simple hardware store. It's a good idea. <laughs> 30 or something. Yeah. And um, these are sandbags that come with the two big boom stands. And these stand these sandbags you bought at a hardware store, and all these have rocks in. So I know some people use sand. I just like to use rocks, just little pebbles. We have small, medium-sized sands, you have ground stands. You have medium-sized sands. Medium sized sands, large. These are easy to buy them in Frodo or Impact. There's the two good sands I like to get. 
Okay. And these are my silver or white reflectors where, um, you know, they remember if you want to bounce light in a soft way, use the white part, but a more dramatic way, use the silver part. In both of these silvers, you could flip over to the gold to have like a yellowish taint. Portrait photographers do this like outside. Mm -hmm. I've seen that. And these are snoots where this is a nice grid that comes off and you can put gels, little circular gels that change the color. And I'll show that tonight, just what the small little circles look like. And you wanna make sure you use a 40 degree angle. Okay. And great for, you know, adding a light in a small way. And you always wanna use the grid for a good contrast and flattering light. These are aluminum reflector bowls. These are great, tough aluminum, and these are great for bouncing in light. The fires, and these will help add in light to make the light more, a lot more contrast. And it's great for solo products and also dramatic portraits. These are homemade tables I made wood. Someone didn't want their wood, I took it. And I, <laughs> I like to build a lot of stuff. This is great for light painting or a miniature table in any way. This is a homemade rack. I made this and these poles can expand. I'll talk about poles later. I used to cool. <laughs> stands in this, but now I can just make this like a background. But now I use this to store on my uh, plexi board my um, foam boards and other stuff. So there's many ways to use this rack. And these are just cubes. They cost about 25 bucks on Target. They're great, I've used them for years. I know some people use Apple boxes, that's fine. Yeah, they're expensive though, pretty expensive. Apple boxes are expensive, that's why, you know. And then these are crates. And sometimes, you know, I was taking a trip to Brookshire Gardens on my way home. I find a nice, you know, crate. I decided to take it. And it says property of Verizon. I bring it to Verizon. Uh, they said I could have it. And, you know, okay, I took it. I washed it and I cleaned it. And the buckets are great for holding stuff. And they're both great for, you know, storing stuff. That's awesome. Amazing what a manager doesn't want in their office. They can give it what someone else can do. That's right. This is a concrete block where you saw it, it, the, these holes hold up the stands, but these grooves, it can hold up a nice foam board. Hmm. So instead of getting a stand, you could just use that just to rest it on, on the table. That is awesome. And these are stools. Like if you have a broken stool with like a broken back, maybe you can turn it into a take it, just get a power saw and saw this off, or just a regular hand saw. Just saw it off. And those are nice stools. And you could sit on, you could put a light on. Hmm. Turn this into a miniature plexi table with a foam board, a white plexiglass, a white, a black plexiglass, a white plexiglass. That's awesome. That is. This is a rack where I bought a dishwasher. I did not want to throw this away. I see value in this. <laughs> and I screwed on this piece of wood, and this is great for holding up a floor light in the floor underneath it. Yeah. I think I saw that on one of your other, yeah, where it was held it up. That's great. We're going to use it tonight. These are nice big black hard bees. I use this on light painting, or if you want to take a portrait a shot, you put it in the corner, and it's great for natural light. You could put up, you could attach like a black foam board. And this is, I made this out of, you know, stretcher frames from Plaza Arts, and also Office Depot, I got these plastic um, canvas at discount prices. Hmm. 
And these are just expansion poles where you just attach to the ceiling and you can hold this up with um, spring uh, CAG clamps. Okay. Or you can use, you know, big spring clamps. That's pretty good. These are just regular one inch poles. I'm gonna use these tonight with the black plexi with the 45 degree slant. Mm. And the bottom two poles to get expand for a nice background like on that rack that you saw in the other photograph. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. And these are all the lenses I use. I like to use prime lenses for my still life photography. Now, sometimes I can't use a 7200, but prime lenses are the sharpest. Now, with technology advancing today, that the zooms are coming really good too, really good. But I still prefer the prime. You don't have to worry about the app, but the, so it makes the exposure easier. Like if I, like the bottom one, but the 4.5, the 5.6, 5, 5. if you zoom out, you kind of decrease the exposure value. But if the aperture is the same, like the first four of the 7200, so if you zoom out with the, at least for the 7200, you don't have to worry about decreasing the value of the exposure. And that's why for still life photography, I just like to use the, the prime lenses. So that makes sense. Yeah. If you want to zoom, you just move in closer. <laughs> That's right. Move yourself. <laughs> so I do the same with outdoors too. Like when I go in a Lovebrook at Glen State Park. And sometimes if you just position the, the photograph with a prime lens, you get a very beautiful shot. I know it could be challenging in the rocks and stuff, but it's a challenge, but I love it. That's awesome. Yeah, it's about image stabilization and that can cause it um, vibrant reduction where it's best to use this feature without a tripod. If you use this feature with the tripod, the image will probably not process correctly. You could have color shear problems. You could get damage to the pixels. You don't want that. That's why with the tripod, don't use it. But without a tripod, use it. Now the manual autofocus is, I like to do, you know, for outdoor lighting, I like to use autofocus. But for light panning, I like to do a quick autofocus then just switch to manual focus. Afterwards, okay. Yeah, so, and just the autofocus is AF for autofocus, manual focus for manual focus, but they both are effective. And the stable is, you know, with the tripod, I usually have that turned off because I do a lot of tripod work. I do too. Um, I prefer it. Yeah. You just remember to turn off the amortization or vibration reduction off when you use it on a tripod. Okay. These are my cases. You can buy this at a computer store like Micro Center or Best Buy. These are sturdy. They cost three times less than the other camera cases and think tank, but they're very sturdy and tough and they don't take up a lot of space and they're tough. And I've had them for several years, many years. I have the same cases. They are awesome. These are my tripods and stands. The top window is my tripods. One of them I cut the bottom part of for landscape. These are both used. And I usually use a cable release or remote. And the bottom is my light my camera stand, I use this a lot in still life photography. And I'll talk about a cable release or a remote. It's coming soon. And I always like to make sure they use ISO 100 a lot of times. Maybe I could raise it to 200, but I like to just use ISO 100. Even though the image is probably exposed, that's fine. But why use more things you need to when you take a photograph? This is a wire cable release. I do a lot of this with still life indoor. 
I've been doing this a lot. Maybe I could press a shutter firm to firm, but I, I do that. But a lot of times I use it cable release indoor. And I can use the remote too. I like to use that outdoors. I use both. And I'll talk about the remote soon, but you know, get a cable release you're comfortable with. You can even use your cell phone as a type of release with technology today. Got it. Here's my wireless remote shutter where if I'm 15 away, I can use it. And you're both run on AAA batteries. And this will work with any hot shoe of any standard modern digital DSLR. And it will work for mirror mirrorless too. Um, and this is just a remote where I could set the timer. I could, I could, I could press and hold and release. I could do a 30 second automatic exposure. Basically, this would go on any camera that accepts this type of configuration. This will go on the camera, and this will go on the thing here. Okay. So just a wireless remote shutter. And it's a lot more flexible than wired. It's 30 possible channels to work with, and it's 80 meters plus with a remote wireless distance. It's a lot more flexible, and it has a nice, you know, two-digit, you know, time format. And the top thing is a sky port. I use this a lot for my strobes, but you can also use the Canon EX430 flash. They're still good. You put it in the manual. This operates on four AA batteries. This operates on two AA batteries. And that there's a difference. I mean, this could be with three different groupings, a lot more power, but this could be with you know 16 channels and four different groupings. And they're both great for a remote trigger in some way, a transmitter in some way. Okay. This is how I clean my still life tails with notice. I usually just use one, twos for light scratches and threes for heavy scratches. But a lot of times I just use one. Now the black plexi table, as you need to be doing this a lot, is blowing off the dust with like a lens blower because dust will be in the photograph. So you just want to squirt this on the table to get rid of some dust. Okay. Where do you get this uh, cleanser? You can buy this at a car store. Auto. Okay. You can buy it online to Amazon. A lot of times I just use one and just a gentle lint cloth wipe. Okay. These are my mirrors, my folding mirrors, the bouncing light. These are armature clamps just to hold these up. Mm -hmm. Duct tape, you can buy this at a drug store. You can buy this at an art store, armature wire. Could be using the old film days. Yep. <laughs> subject here uh, floating. Mm -hmm. These are CRG clamps. You can buy them at a hardware store online. They're great for holding stuff up. These are spring clamps, come up great on all sizes. These are clothespins, small you know, spring clamps. All sizes are great, both the spring clamps and the CAG clamps. And these are gels, and they play, they're going to play a feature in tonight's lab, virtual demo lab. These are, you know, silver cards for adding in light in a dramatic way. And they got gold cards for adding a light in. A gold way. Do these you get these? Where do you get the um, silver cards from? I haven't you seen them. those. You can buy them from Michaels. You can buy them from Plaza Arts. Okay. This is Cinefilm. Okay. Black aluminum foil, and this is. A fusion drive paper. Okay. This is, you know, a black a frame you can buy at a store. And this is like fusion drive paper. You got Plaza Arts. These are, you know, stretcher art frames. So you can buy the fusion paper online at an art store, like even BH. 
These are black plexiglass sheets. These are white plexiglass sheets, the many ways you tables. And these are clear and you can do food in another way. We just have the light shine up and the food's in like a floating motion. Hmm. These are six big six foot strims, which are great for softening the light. And you don't have to use a stand, you can just rest on the strobe. Okay. Wood from you know Home Depot with you know special square L brackets that are small or medium size. And it's connected together by screws. And small L brackets. Okay. You buy, no, you can buy more expensive frames at art stores. I decided to use wood from Home Depot because it's cheaper and it, and it works great. And the thing about these big strims, that could be used without a stand. You could lean on a table or just lean in on the strip. That's awesome. And these are my white cards. They come in all sizes. So I just like to call this big white cards because many of the white cards in both photographs are big. That corresponds to the black. So white's great for bouncing a light. You can also create a cool gray background. Hang on, like the angle of light on the floor, mm -hmm. lower part of the um, foam board, you get a nice cool background. You can do the same thing with big black cards. You create a black background, but now if you hang the light at the lower part of the card, you get a nice cool background. And like black cards are great for taking out glares and blocking out too much light when a strobe bleeds too much light. These are just a foam, foam boards, right? Yeah. Okay. You buy these foam boards at, um, I buy these at Plaza Arts. Okay. Now we're gonna do the virtual YouTube. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna send the YouTube link to your email. Okay. I'd be able to, and I'll send it to the chat too, but now I want to stop the recording. This is one part of the thing. So I will soon send you the YouTube live link. Okay. Now the Zoom link, it's in the, the Zoom link you're using for this presentation will be the same for the demo, the CC demo, the screenshot demo. Okay. I'm going to stop this recording.